We'd like to inspect the house before we move in. Don't you trust me? It's not that we don't trust you. We just want to do the right thing. Of course you do. So sign the papers, give me a check, move in, and you can inspect the house all you'd like. Don't sign anything and don't spend a dime until you've hired a professional home inspector. They will definitely see things that you will miss and they can save you tens of thousands of dollars. There's really four categories they're watching for. Electrical, plumbing, structural, and mechanical. And they always start by walking around the exterior of the home, so let's do the same. Well, here's our first point to catch. We've got a crack right above the garage door, but it's not a major crack. It's pretty minor, really just cosmetic. If you look at it tightly, you can see it's not too wide. If it got to be a half inch or more, we know that we might have a structural problem in the house, whether it be with the foundation or the framing of the house itself. But since it's just a cosmetic crack and it's that narrow, there's no big problem, so that means no big bills. Let's go around to the side of the home. Walk down the side of the home and check for any major structural damage or any cracks. Here we have what appears to be a crack, but it's not. It's actually an expansion joint that we added on purpose with the saw and then filled in with caulk. The reason for that is we have a long, solid surface in this wall, and it needs a place to flex. If we don't have that, it's going to crack all up and down the wall. So that was sawed in there on purpose and then filled in with caulk to give it a place to move and shift. Down here at the bottom of the brick, Check out your foundation also. Make sure that you have no major cracks. Little cracks are okay. Big cracks might be a problem. Also make sure that you have four to five inches of exposed foundation and that the landscaping slopes away from the house. You don't want any water during a heavy rain to come inside the home. So you've got to get that foundation up in the air and you've got to slope the ground away from the house itself. Now the best thing you can do is get your inspector up on the roof to see if there's any structural damage or any problems with the shingles. If you don't have an inspector and you want to do it yourself, take a ladder and get up there and look around. If you're afraid of getting on the ladder, stand out in the yard with a pair of binoculars and just look over the whole roof. What you're looking for are damaged shingles or shingles that are flipped up or even worse yet, shingles that are missing and get it repaired before you buy the house. Let's start to go inside now. Before the inspector goes in the house, he checks two different places inside the garage, starting with the breaker box. We've already pulled the front of this breaker box off so you can see what's behind the wall. And it starts with the big breaker itself, which controls all of the power coming into the house. This is a 200 amp breaker. These smaller breakers are for the individual circuits throughout the house. We have 40s, 30s, 20s, and then we have the right gauge wire coming out of each one. Even up here, they have all the grounding wires running down to ground, so you're not going to get electrocuted inside the house. So it's worth spending the money to hire the professional inspector to look at the things that you can't check yourself. And don't ever pull the panel off the front of your breaker box because you'll end up electrocuting yourself. This is something for a professional. The second thing that a home inspector is looking for out in the garage is the water heater. It's not a hot water heater. The water's not already hot. It's a water heater. You're heating up the water and making it hot. This one is a gas water heater. And then you're going to check the gas line to make sure that there's no leaks. And they're also going to make sure that the closet is properly ventilated. Here we have a vent at the bottom and a vent at the top, which is required by code. You also don't want to store any gasoline or flammable liquids anywhere in the garage because those vapors might get to the water heater and you might blow up this end of the house. So keep those flammables somewhere else. Let's go on inside the home. Now there's a lot you can learn about your house up inside the attic. First, check your rafters. Just make sure that everything's straight and everything's nailed together and that they didn't use any old lumber or have a piece of lumber that they cut a big chunk out of. This is the support that ties your whole house together, so make sure they did a good job. Also, look around your roof and see if you see daylight anywhere. You should not be able to see daylight. If you do, that's a place where water's gonna end up getting inside your house one day. And also check for any old rotted out wood because that's a sign that water is already leaking into the home. On your insulation, make sure that you've got a lot of it. You should have about 8 to 12 inches from your sheetrock for your ceiling all the way to the top. We've got much more than that, so we know we're okay. And you should have a certificate stapled up somewhere in the attic that shows exactly what the R factor is of your ceiling insulation. And this is where you can save the most money on your utility bill, so make sure they did it right. Over on your heating and air conditioning, also you need to check your drains. You should have two of them. The primary drain goes out of the unit and down into the P-trap in the bathroom. Now the reason for the drainage is there's water condensation building up on this unit because of the temperature difference between the unit itself and the attic. So you need a way to let that water out without going in the house. That's your primary way. You have a backup drain that goes into a drip pan 
and it goes outside of your house. I'll show you later where it comes out. If you ever see the water coming out, you know that you've got a problem with your primary and you need to get it fixed because we don't want any water inside the house. One last thing to check upstairs is your ductwork. Make sure that it's not crimped anywhere where it's going to block some air. You want good airflow in your house because that means low utility bills. One of the first things a home inspector will do is fill up all your sinks with water and your bathtubs. He'll come back to it later and I will too and tell you why. Once the inspector comes inside the house, there's a number of things they're looking for. One is to make sure that all of the outlets do have electricity. They're going to check your stoves if you have a slide in unit to make sure the stove tip bracket's been installed so it won't flip over on a small child. They'll also run the dishwasher through one full cycle to make sure everything works there and there's no leaks. Anywhere there's a hard surface like this ceramic tile backsplash, they're going to look for cracks to see if the foundation's moving at all. They're also going to check all the sheetrock to see if there's any major cracks there. Minor cracks are okay, that's just the frame expanding and contracting. Major cracks, that could be a sign of a serious foundation problem, which would mean a big bill. Now let's go on out back. Inspecting the back of a home is just like inspecting the front. Just look up and down the siding, make sure you have no major cracks or any pieces missing. Over here on this big window pane, we do have a crack from the house actually shifting. It's a stress crack. You can tell there's no impact there on the glass. It actually broke because either the foundation's moving a little bit or maybe the wood framing's expanding and contracting a little bit. That's not really gonna hurt the house, but we do need to go ahead and replace the glass. In front of this window here, on our overhang, we have a pipe coming out. That's our secondary drain unit from up in the attic. Now, according to code, it has to be next to a window. That way, if our primary ever gets stopped up, the water draining out of the secondary unit, we can actually see from inside the house. And we know we've got a problem, and we need to call a heating and air specialist to come take care of our primary drain. Now, let's go inside and check on those sinks. The reason we filled up those sinks earlier and let them set was we were looking for leaks underneath. Here we can see our drain pipes and we don't have a problem. No water standing in the cabinet itself. And by the way, there's that primary drain for the HVAC upstairs. Again, if this one ever gets backed up, then the secondary outside by the window will take over and let you know that you've got a problem. It's well worth the investment to get you a home inspector. They normally run $100 to $300 to do a thorough inspection, and they're definitely going to find things that you will never see on your own. And again, they can save you tens of thousands of dollars. Make sure you find one in your area with a good reputation.